While Americans remain stranded overseas, Biden bolts to his vacation beach house in Delaware. About the only person talking about those Americans is Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and even he's not saying that much. Today, he briefed reporters on the so-called diplomatic efforts to bring them home. We are in very direct active contact uh, with this group, and there's absolutely no deadline on this work. Uh, we're going to be in very close touch, and uh, as they uh, desire to leave, uh, we're going to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help them do exactly that. Wait a minute, if they desire to come home, pretty sure they desired to come home when they tried to get to the airport in Kabul, but were turned away. Remember when you abandoned them? But at least he's trying because not everyone is. Today, Biden toured storm ravaged Louisiana. Another failure for him, really. Many residents of the area hit hard by Hurricane Ida are still without power and they're struggling to find food, water and gas. Apparently the lessons of Katrina were lost on our fearless leaders in Washington. But Biden started the day with another failure of his, the tanking economy. Biden chalked up today's abysmal jobs report, not to his spend a palooza, but the Delta variant. That's right. The Delta variant is the thing causing the inflation spike that's forcing prices higher. And when he was asked about the stranded Americans, he responded just as you would expect him to respond, the Biden walk away. Thank you all very much. On the status of getting Americans out of Afghanistan. Mr. President, what Mr. about President, booster shots? What about the confusion about booster shots, sir? A scene that we have seen too many times. He really should consider patenting that move. Well, Biden's handlers have had their hands full over the past several months and even more so in the past several weeks. There's just something off about him. And that is something my guest host, Tom Basile, has also noticed over the past few months. Tom, great to have you back with us tonight. Welcome. Thank you so much, Jen. It's great to be back. I, you, you hit the nail on the head. Have you noticed Afghanistan doesn't really exist anymore? They want to focus on that $4.7 trillion in spending that they're getting ready to try to ram through Congress. It's absolutely amazing. It just, it's just—it's sure like it do. never happened, right? Right. No, nothing to see here. Well, you know, there's something else that I, that I wanted to touch on today. You know, Jen, as the president feels the pressure of his office, he's increasingly erratic and at times even lethargic. We're going to talk about that later, prompting debate about his physical and emotional condition. And you know what? It might be worse than we thought. Stories from the families of our fallen heroes who interacted with the president while attending the dignified, tra dignified transfer at Dover Air Force Base support a troubling theory. One father recalled his encounter with the president, said Biden spent his time talking about his son, Bo, rather than his fallen son. Another relative told The Washington Post that Biden, quote, kept on checking his watch and bringing up Bo. Now, Biden speaks of his son, Bo, often. He awkwardly brought him up up in that now infamous interview with George Stephanopoulos about the Afghan pullout, even though it wasn't germane to the conversation, it actually didn't make any sense. He mentioned Bo in that stilted and defensive national address about the Afghan withdrawal. And in that speech, he spoke with great sincerity about losing a child, describing it as feeling like you're being sucked into a black hole in the middle of your chest and there's no way out. Well, there's no doubt about that. But there is emerging here a Bo Biden effect on this presidency that at times perhaps renders this president so risk averse, so hobbled by emotion and natural decline that he cannot effectively project American power abroad. It also makes it hard for him to project genuine empathy. Now, that leaves us at great risk in a world that is getting far more dangerous under his watch. It also further calls into question his independence from influential subordinates or forces outside the White House. Now, when, when Biden speaks of his late son, you get the sense that he's not consoling the nation, but that he's working through his own grief. No one could doubt that what he feels is genuine. The loss of a child is the most gut-wrenching of human experiences. But in Biden's case, that loss was compounded by a sordid sexual drama between his late son's wife and his son Hunter, the crack-smoking amateur porn producer and newly minted artist. Now, there's an old saying that parents are only as happy as their unhappiest child. 
Now, if that's true, for all the broad smiles and bravado of his younger years, this president lives, unfortunately, in a very dark place. Now, we've had presidents who have faced the loss of a child before. From John Adams to George Bush, it's actually a shockingly long list, considering only 45 men have held the office. But if the car accident that claimed the lives of his wife and young daughter once served to steal the brash young senator, propelling him to run for president in 1988, it is important to consider that perhaps the death of his, his son Beau may have finally encumbered his soul so much and to such an extent that it is speeding his decline and impacting his decision making. I'm not being callous here, folks. No doubt his pain is real. But what we need to understand is whether there exists a nexus of factors at play here that make him unable to lead effectively. If Bo's death, combined with the consequences of age and other conditions, have left Biden with clay feet, for instance, when it comes to projecting military power, it puts countless lives around the world in danger. You know, he once remarked to his wife after he was elected to the Senate at age 29 that he feared something would happen. He said it was all too perfect. And we're dealing, folks, with a man who is a contradiction, a Catholic who believes in the uncontrollable ravages of fate, perpetually waiting for the next disaster. In the past, he's come out of it somehow stronger, but perhaps not now. Republicans should tread lightly here. The reasons why we're seeing weakness and decline are real issues, but crossing a line could make him into a sympathetic figure. He's tried throughout his career to leverage tra tragedy to help him relate, but in these waning years, he's the one who needs to come to terms with his past. Unfortunately for Biden, the presidency is unforgiving. It is unrelenting, and it will not allow it. His own emotional difficulties may be getting in the way of his performance and consequently our security and our freedom. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.